Hello, this is Dan Alford with Arc Specialties. Today we're talking about robotic material removal. I'm talking about deburring, sanding, trimming, and polishing. So why was it we automated welding and cutting first? That's because you can do these processes without adaptive control. Finishing cannot. Because with finishing, you must compensate for variations in part size and placement. One of the earliest ways to do robotic finishing was with compliant tooling. You can have tooling that's spring-loaded in one or more axes, and that will automatically compensate for part placement. Compliant tooling works fine on simple parts, but today's application is complex and three-dimensional. In this case, we needed an advanced closed-loop system. So what we've done is we have a six degree of freedom load cell mounted between the robot and the tooling. This load cell will feed back tool force and we can compensate for part diameter and placement automatically. So we're using Fanix force control package and a push corp spindle. By closing the loop and letting the robot have a sense of touch, we can duplicate what a human does when they sand or finish a part. We program the robot to approach the part and then we move towards the part until contact's made. At that point, we increase to our operating force and move around the perimeter of the part, always vectoring the force normal to the surface. This is precisely what a human does when they're finishing a part. On this job, we're using an automatic tool changer and a variety of tools. We needed a combination of flap wheels, disc sanders, and wire brushes to remove the flash left over from the elastomeric molding operation. All these tools wear out over time, and as they do, our closed loop system automatically compensates for changes in tool diameter. I find it ironic that sometimes the easy jobs like sanding and polishing require some of the most sophisticated sensors and control algorithms to successfully automate. Arc Specialties thrives on problems. Send us yours.